some Suns news came today to us. Back-to-back uh, -back days of Suns news during the offseason. And we heard that Tyshawn Alexander was waived. There is a lot to digest here. And I think there's four schools of thought, like kind of different ways you might think of the situation. I'm going to talk about all four of those. And we'll talk about what's most likely, what everyone's thinking, and that sort of thing. This is a very complicated situation. It's it's a lot more than just this random two-way contract player got, got you know, uh, waived. You know, we've seen Tyshawn Alexander play. And it feels questionable at best that Tyshawn Alexander is waived. Anyways, I do, I do want to make a point of saying I've been pointing out a lot of negative stuff about the Suns lately. And there's going to be a positive video tomorrow, and I'm going to pre-record it because I'm not going to have time tomorrow, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release a positive video about the Suns, I swear. But we got we to gotta be a bit more negative today, and we got to talk about the situation. There's four different ways you can go here, and we'll start it off with the one that I saw a lot of people talking about, which is Robert Sarver's just being really cheap, and the Suns are just not willing to pay Tyshawn. And... Well, not the Suns. Uh, Robert Sarver is not willing to pay Tyshawn. The thing is, is that his 400k contract, $400,000 contract, does not apply to the Suns' actual cap space. So there's really no salary cap implications if you just, you know, let him stay on the roster. It's actually just coming all out of pocket. There's quite a few scenarios in NBA ownership where contracts and other stuff does just come out of pocket and it does not apply to the cap space and it feels like especially after seeing the suns get rid of their g league affi affiliate team that the suns might just be cheaping out and you know just not willing to pay this four hundred thousand dollar contract robert sarver wants to save every single penny well that's a lot of pennies but yeah it feels like the suns are kind of cheaping out right here and it kind of leaves the Suns in a position where there's not a whole lot of player development going on. I understand there's a lot of guys in here who can be future stars, but sometimes you need players who aren't going to be future stars and who aren't going to demand a lot of player time, playing time and who are going to sign for cheaper contracts. There's great young talent on the team that's going to be phenomenal in the future. I just wish they would have gone with draft picks and, you know, you know, younger guys, you undrafted free agents bringing in two-way contract players instead of, you know, just letting them walk and not, you know, attempting to improve their roster that way. As much as you want to say, you know, the Suns want to stay old and they want to stay with all these guys who are already experienced in the NBA, you can always get better. And I've said that quite a few times and I'm seeing a lot more people say it than I've ever seen before that the Suns have not been, you know, willing, willing enough to do it. And, you know, to, to improve their roster via young players. The thing is, is that they have amazing young talent, but there's a lot of potential for them to leave. If you find those gem prospects on your own, they're going to be more likely to re-sign with your team. And they're going to be signing for cheaper contracts. And they're going to sign for limited roles instead of guys like Cameron Johnson, who I'm going to say he's the topic of the video tomorrow, where I'm convinced he's just going to leave the team because he's not going to get the money he wants. It's probably going to be a similar story for Jalen Smith. It's going to be a similar story for these younger guys who know they can have a bigger role and they know they can get a bigger contract if they're not on the Suns. And I'm sure they love, you know, the culture here and they love the Suns franchise, but they're going to they're going to leave. And that's when you regret not picking up these young guys who, you know, they're not great now, but down the line, you know, you're not really sacrificing too much, like the 15th man spot on your roster, a two-way contract that doesn't even apply to the cap. Like, it's really not too much to ask for. And I guess it will be proven wrong, and we will look at some of these other theories if they do end up signing another two-way contract player, maybe one of those guys from the Summer League team. Like, I believe, like Michael Frazier or Kyle Alexander, the two names I've seen a lot of. I mean, personally, I think uh, John Axel Gudmundsson from what I saw, is the best player on that G League squad other than Tyshawn Alexander and Jalen Smith, but I don't know. I guess people are just seeing it differently. But yeah, it's just interesting. Are they just really not willing to spend money? That leads me to the second one, which I personally think is the most likely. I think it's the most plausible. I think it's like if I had to put a percentage by any one of these theories, I would say it's about a 65% chance of what actually happened, which is Tyshawn Alexander 
just said he doesn't want to play with the team anymore. And he said he wants to move on to a different team where he can get an actually fully guaranteed roster spot and he gets more money and he gets more playing time. I think he's talented enough to do that. And I think he's enough tape for, you know, teams to be convinced to sign him, especially teams that are young and have a youth movement going on. This dude has a ton of upside and we saw him play fantastic in the summer league. We saw all the potential upside of Tyshawn Alexander uh, displayed in the summer league. Like this guy looks like a future Suns guard, you know, coming off of screens, hitting those mid range shots, hitting some of Booker's sets. And he even wins some Chris Paul sets where, you know, he's acting as a playmaker, acting as a shooter coming off of screens, acting as a shooter coming off of uh, movement. Like there were so many interesting uh, highlights from his summer league where you can just really see it. This guy is going to be a great NBA player in the future like a really good player and he can really play defense as well and uh, this could be a situation where he's just betting on himself he doesn't really have a future of this team and he wants to get paid and he wants to have a big a bigger chance to prove himself in comparison to a son's team where he might just be relegated to getting a few more two-way contracts or maybe he's not getting like maybe he's just getting a message from his team like like some sort of unspoken thing like you ain't really part of the future here like you're just along for the ride and yeah I'm, maybe that's the case maybe it isn't but I, I just feel like this is by far the most likely that they just came to an agreement that they're gonna waive him so he can go join another team where he can be more successful and he will be more successful and he will have more of an opportunity to prove himself when he's not on the suns and uh yeah it just sucks for me when i'm just looking at this and i'm saying that's a really talented player that slipped through our fingers and i re really would have liked to keep him around but yeah that's that's likely it it's likely what has happened here uh, we can go into the third train of thought which is the suns just really like their players and they just like uh, having veteran players who've experienced a lot more and there's a lot of flaws to this argument and uh, the thing is, is that this is a two-way contracts player. You know, he's not hitting the cap. You can't trade him. He's really, you know, he's not an issue either. Like, this dude's not a locker room issue. He's an extremely intelligent player who's been a great locker room personality from everything we can tell. And I think he's he's learned very quickly. And I think he's been a positive, uh, impactful player, even off of the court. And... To see him go is simply confusing, and this uh, this is the main reason why this argument does not make sense, that they're prioritizing, you know, they only want to keep players they're going to play, and they only want to keep veterans, and they only want to keep these types of players. First of all, I guess that this, this theory becomes a lot more viable if they do end up trading Jalen Smith, but yeah, I just don't see it being the case. This dude's been extremely professional. He's been extremely, you know... Just solid player. He's accepted his role. He's, you know, he's been everything the Suns have asked him to be and more. And he's, uh, you know, he isn't complaining. And uh, it just didn't make a lot of sense, especially right now of all times to wave him. Like, wouldn't you just like wait until, uh, you know, the preseason where you actually have to finalize your roster, that sort of thing, and choose who you're actually taking into the regular season? Isn't that where you would? you know wave him i don't know so it's a, it's a it's a really confusing situation and i think this argument just makes the other arguments more plausible because i feel like uh, this third argument just kind of weak the final argument is that this guy just isn't good and i think that's not the case if you watch him play in the summer league he's he's actually a pretty really really decent player and you're really not paying him much to keep him on your roster it really comes down to those first two theories that either Robert Sarver is just being really cheap or they just came to agreements that Tyshawn Alexander can go off and join another team to be more successful and make more money. That really feels like the most likely and it's just a bit confusing just looking at the situation and I don't know, will we get more information in the future? Maybe, maybe not. It just kind of sucks to see him go. I like Tyshawn, and yeah, uh, he's going to go be successful somewhere else, that's for sure. Anyways, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed and you made it all the way to the end, I've been posting a lot of Suns content, mainly because there's not a whole lot to talk about, and yeah, I'm just posting what I like to talk about. And if you like Suns content, consider hitting subscribe. And anyways, I will see the next one. Good. Bye.